Wow, how are we doing, guys? A big crowd, yeah, right? All right. Um, so the end of that practice was that some of the more kind of intense ones versus one stuff you've had? Uh, probably very similar to the way that we've practiced all last week up in Kenosha. Uh, a lot of situational stuff. Uh, you know, I thought again there was some good ebb and flow, some really good things that the guys will learn from, and, and uh, we can't put them in enough of those types of situations in a controlled setting. You know, number one priority obviously is to have the team peak next Saturday night, not not uh, not today, not this Saturday. So I think we're, we've we've built upon a really strong foundation of camp, and now I, I think we're ready to get off their legs a little bit and get ready to go for game week here pretty soon. Looks like Pierre was making a bunch of plays today. Uh, he made some plays. He did a nice job. It's good. How, how does practice change now when you start? Getting off their legs in the fire. Well, you know, here in the immediate, obviously, we've got uh, tomorrow we'll go a little bit shorter. We're going shells tomorrow, going after two really hard goes yesterday and today. And then um, we'll give them an opportunity on, on, win on Thursday after the mock game. Uh, in the afternoon, we'll go over special team situations and then we'll give them recovery opportunities on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So that we go into game week on you know Sunday, we'll use it as an advantage day, you know, because we have extra time uh, to, to really kind of get going in the first part uh, of, of game week. So we'll we'll show the guys kind of tomorrow. We'll, we'll teach them how it is to be uh, kind of a scout guy a little bit and go ones on twos and kind of just show them how that works and, and how some guys will have some roles that way that have to give us a, a great look in all three phases. And uh, it's a process. Kind of teaching them how to practice. Kind of teach them how to practice in game week. Jorgensen's a guy who seems to be having a good fall camp. Do you remember much about his recruitment or how? He yeah. Did that? Oh yeah. I mean, it was uh, very heated. You know, his recruiting was very heated, and um, you know, from there into it, and I um, you know, grew up kind of in the shadows of uh, Spartan Stadium, and you know, Paul was just I, we thought from day one was a terrific fit to our program. You know, we thought that uh, uh, you know academically, and, and then obviously the leadership that he he demonstrated, and then his, his athleticism and skill set. He's unfortunately been. been dealing with injuries early in his career. So it's great to see him out there and hope to see him have some success here as things go along. As an old defensive guy, how do you define the job of safety? Well, you, you've got to be pretty special, right? You've got to be a guy that can get us lined up and be the quarterback of the defense. You've got to be able to cover slot receivers man to man. You've got to be able to get down in the box and be physical when the ball pops through the first and second layer. So not, a, not an easy job by any stretch of the imagination. What did you see in your two guys in Henry and uh, Hibbs? Uh, today, no, or over camp. Over, overall, that that slide that caused you to put them at safety. Well, Eves, you know, number one, that's where he wanted to play. He, we we looked at him both as a running back. If you go back to his recruiting, running back and DB, and he said, I want to play DB. I kind of get excited about those guys, as you know. <laughs> so, I like those guys that have that kind of skill set. And then on top of that, uh, you know, with Trey, he was a very talented athlete coming out of high school. You know, the question was, is he going to eat his way out of the third level into the second level? And, and obviously, he's done a nice job with maintaining his, his weight and, and increasing his strength and his athleticism. So all those things are positive. What have you seen from, uh, from Daniel Jones throughout camp and, and today? Yeah, I think DJ's been solid. I think that uh, he's, uh, he's had great poise. I think that he's competed on every throw that's gone his way. He's been more physical. And then we're obviously putting in different situations from a... Uh, um, you know, sub package standpoint, doing some things. So I, I, I like the camp that DJ's had. Uh, Dwight White. Yeah, Dwight. Uh, he's been doing okay. You know, he's been doing okay. He's been a guy that again is young. So you're going through every experience that you have. And uh, I think I think D White's had a good camp. I think he's poised and ready to to get out there on the field, not only at the corner but also on the kick in. Well, last week you talked about the jump from freshman to sophomore year. And yeah, you know, that's a, a big jump. Um, how has Dan measured up in that regard, considering how much playing time he got last year? Well, I would say if he started from day one, it would maybe be a little bit bigger challenge, but he kind of evolved into that role, and um, uh, I thought he looked at what he experienced last year and came into the offseason really hungry, and he's done a nice job not being complacent with the success from last year and just continuing to work. So he's added size. He's obviously a terrific athlete, and uh, hopefully he'll have a better year this year than last year. How does his athleticism allow you guys to be more creative on offense where maybe the guy wasn't as athletic in that position? Yeah, we've been pretty fortunate. You know, before him, we had Drake Dunsmore, and we were able to do a lot of different things with Drake. And Danny's background is more in a running back position. So, you know, in high school, that's what you know he was as a senior. Was a great running back there at Wheaton South with Coach Muhich. So, um, he, he's got a great skill set to fit kind of what we want to do. He creates matchup problems. He can, run, he can stretch you vertically and uh, can block well to point of attack. I mean, those are those are pretty special skill set. Is it, is it hard to recruit that? I, 
Well, I, I think it's a lot like kind of outside linebacker. I think either you have the necessary skill set or you don't. And, and we're not looking necessarily for the 6'8 six, six, glorified offensive lineman at tight end. You know, we're looking more for the athletic guy that can do multiple things. And, and uh, you know, there's roles for those other guys too. But, you know, what we've seen with Drake, what we've seen with now Danny, uh, you know, those create big time matchup problems for the defense. Uh, do you know what positions you're going to put Chapman and Robbins at? Because it seems like it's been a little bit up in the air. Maybe. Yeah, not to be a smart Alex, but defensive line. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. no, they're they're uh, they're, they're going to play. They're, they're learning both positions, tackling and to be able to have position flexibility and then that depth. It's what we're doing up there. So those two guys are doing a good job. I like that. Uh, Nerd again. Thanks, coach. Mm -hmm. Thanks, coach. Okay, thanks, Appreciate guys. It.